vocoders. I absolutely love them. In fact, I love every type of effect that does something with a human voice, just synthesizes the voice into something awesome. It does not matter what you write about when you do sing the vocoder, does everything just sound so amazing? It does not matter what you write about when you do sing the vocoder, does everything Five different vocoders. They're all built in different ways. They all have different types of functions. And then some of them are very similar in the amount of bands that they're using to split up the voice. We're going to get into that. But first, I want to do a little comparison. I'm going to use the same vocal sequence and the same MIDI sequences. And I'm going to run them through each and every one of these vocoders so you can hear how different they sound when they're set to their most basic setup. So first up, we have iVoxel from Virsin. Now this one was released back in August 2010, and it is the oldest one on this list. Whenever I put out a video that contains a vocoder track in there, or if I publish a track with a vocoder featured in it, it's always iVoxel. It's my most favorite vocoder app on iOS. So I take a step, moving forward, and I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way So I take a step Moving forward And I keep on walking Never looking back I found a way Okay, so next up is Voice Synth by Cuneo. Now this one was released in January 2012 and it is one of my most favorite vocoders on iOS. The problem is that I don't like to work with it when it comes to everything. Maybe some will agree with me, maybe some won't, but I really don't like the way that this thing sounds when doing stuff like this. So I take a step, moving forward. And I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. So I take a step, moving forward. And I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. Next up is an app that was released back in July 2013. It's VoiceBot or VBot by Erik Siegt. This one is interesting because it can actually do up to 128 bands. And on top of that, you can even adjust the amount of bands you're using. So you can go down as low as one band. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, we'll get to that later on. So I take a step, moving forward, and I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. So I take a step, moving forward, and I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. Next up is Dear Woko by Beep Street. Now this one was released back in July 2018, so it's fairly new and it hasn't received any updates yet. Now this one is different from the others because it is an audio unit extension only. It doesn't support interapp audio, which is the way that I prefer using vocoders. I'll explain more about that later on, but this is what it sounds like. So I take a step, moving forward. And I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. So I take a step, moving forward. And I keep on walking, never looking back. 
broken down all right so the next app on our list is matrix vocoder and it is made by the same company who also made ivoxel namely virsyn this one was released back in september 2019 and this is what it sounds like so i take a step moving forward and i keep on walking never looking back I found a way, so I take a step, going forward, and I keep on walking, never looking back. I found a way. All right, so you've just heard five vocoders, five different unique overall sounds. And so what is it that makes these vocoders sound so different from one another? Well, all vocoders have two things in common. They need two things to work. They need a carrier waveform, which is usually a input for a synthesizer. And all of these vocoders have built-in oscillators or something of the sort. So of course, synthesizer waveforms and the way that you work them, filter them, well, that's gonna color the sound, of course. The second thing that's going to color the sound is what's happening on the modulator side. And the modulator side is what's affecting the carrier side. And together they're producing talking synth sounds. Okay, so how does this work though? How do you mix a human voice with a synthesizer? Well, with clever use of uh, filters and some modulations. Now I'm going to explain it in a very simplified way. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you about the illustration you're watching. You see, I found this illustration on Wikipedia. And so I wanted to double check the source to see that it was a correct representation of whatever was in there. Well, I checked the uh, description for the picture and it said it was taken from the uh, Bell Systems Technical Journal. Well, the nice thing about this is that I can double check this now because this thing all the original 36 issues of this $1.50 per year subscription magazine, well, it's online. And back in 1940, issue 19 was published and it had this section called The Carrier Nature of Speech, written by Homer Dudley. And this is the guy who invented the vocoder. And in here, he explains how it works and how you can make it. It's some brilliant stuff, I had a very good read, and if you wanna read up more about the vocoder and find out exactly how it works and everything, I've put a link collection down in the description under the section vocoder, so it's easy to find. Okay, so in order for me to explain how the vocoder works, I need an illustration. And I tried making my own, and this is what happened. Now, I gave this to my girlfriend, and she turned this into this. And so this is what I'm going to use instead. Now, what happens to your voice is that it goes into the vocoder, and it gets split up into an X amount of bands. Now, these bands are bandpass filters, and bandpass filter is something that is filtering off low frequencies and high frequencies. Now, in the case of a vocoder, they're tuned to specific frequencies in a harmonic series in the frequency spectrum. Now, those then go through envelope followers. How do I explain this best? Uh, okay. You have a row of bandpass filters and they're each going through an envelope follower and these envelope followers are listening to the amplitude of those signals. It then creates a control signal that is being sent to the second bank of filters on the carrier side. And the control signal is telling the bandpass filters on the carrier side about the amplitude it's receiving from the filters on the modulator side. So what you get is the filter bank on the carrier side mimicking the frequency spectrum and each frequency's amplitude to that of the modulator side. It's basically mimicking your voice. 
Uh, I think that does it. Do you get it? Okay, so to break it down, the resulting sound of a vocoder is being firstly affected by the character of your voice, and then the character of the synthesizer waveform. And then the filters are extremely important here because of the slopes, how they're set up in the harmonic spectrum, and also the amount of filters that you're using. All these parts will color your final sound output. And this is why all of these vocoders sound different, because the filter structure inside all of these are a bit different, and the amounts of filters that they're using. Hello, you, and welcome to Hacker Chat. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching Hacker Attack. And you know, the amount of bands being important, I can demonstrate what happens actually when you remove bands from a vocoder with VoiceBot by Eric Sieg, because this thing allows us to actually increase and decrease the bands being used. And I want you to listen closely here, because I'm gonna start at the maximum amount of bands, 128. Yep, this one uses more bands than any of these other vocoders. And we're gonna go from 128 to one band. And you're gonna hear it. As soon as I start removing bands, it's gonna go from sounding like a vocoder sound with a human voice in it, down to just a synthesizer waveform. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host and your Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack. So the amount of bands could be viewed kind of like resolution. The more bands you're using, the more of a voice textured sound you're gonna get out of your vocoder. And the less bands you're using, the more of a synth textured sound, less of a voice texture sound you're gonna get. So the reason to why I explain all of this is because I want you to get a sense uh, of what it is that makes these vocoders so different from one another. Because there is one thing that is fundamentally different between all of them, and that is the amount of bands. So it doesn't really matter if you put the same type of synthesizer waveform in there, the shape of the filters, the slopes, and the amount of bands is gonna give each of them a very, very distinct type of sound. And you see, that's why I have five of these vocoders instead of one or two. Now, one thing I didn't talk about was how the pitch is being handled in a vocoder. And I'm not gonna explain it here because the video is gonna get too long. So if you really wanna know more about it, then check out the link collection down in the description under the vocoder section. <laughs> Now there is a thing that will actually affect a lot of you depending on what type of workflow you have and it has to do with inter-app audio versus audio unit extensions. You see there is one app in here, namely Derwoko, which only supports the audio unit extension protocol or AUV3. And then the other four, they do support standalone mode, inter-app audio, and some of them do support audio unit extension mode, but I prefer the inter-app audio protocol for a specific reason. If you wanna know why, stick to the end and I'll tell you exactly why this is a thing. We're gonna begin by looking at the synth part inside iVoxel. Hello you and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host and you're watching Hack Attack. Now some of these other vocoders will allow you to mix and blend several oscillators or waveform selectors together in order for you to create some unique timbres for your vocoder sound. Now iVoxel only has one waveform selector, one oscillator you could say. However, that isn't as limited as you would think because when we look at the different waveforms here, there's a lot of different waveforms. And when you're using pulse waveforms, you have a pulse width control. And if you're using any of these that's called multi or stereo, then you have a detuning knob for all of the different waves too. Hey, 
Now, on top of this, you have a formant filter inside iVoxel, and you pretty much have full control over it through these three knobs, gender, cutoff, and consonant. Lastly, you've got a breath control, and you can also add mic aspiration through the mic level control. The formant filter gives you the ability to make your sound sound more masculine or more feminine. Now, when it comes to shaping your vocoder timbre, there is one other control that is very important, and it's this thing right here. This one is present in the other vocoders too, and the way you can view this is like an equalizer. So, low frequencies to the left, high frequencies to the right. Hello, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching your Hack Attack. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack. Right now we're just on the first page of iVoxel and there are actually more pages and there's no way I'm gonna go through all of them and all the functions because the video would become too long. We have more vocoders to go through. There is this one thing I really wanna highlight in here and it is the Voxel page and the Voxel function. You see, Voxel is pretty much just a fancy name for sampler inside iVoxel. iVoxel actually has the ability to sample and playback samples. A quick note, you're supposed to be able to import your own samples, but every time I press this one, it doesn't do anything. So right now it isn't working, but you can still record your own. Now there are two other vocoders on this list that will allow you to sample and playback sample, namely VoiceBot by Erik Sigt and also Voice Synth by Cuneo. But there's this one thing that only iVoxel does. You see, it allows you to set up zones for your samples. You do this by pressing Assign Voxel. And then you get this dark area showing above the uh, keyboard keys. Now, to insert a sample, you simply press a key where you want a sample to play, and you get this menu. Now, to insert a sample, you just press insert, and you get this sample selector, or voxel selector. Now, I voxel ships with a lot of voxels in there, and you can just go ahead and use all of these. But if you're recording your own voxels, then they will show up in this list too. Now, simply just select one of the samples, and so the sample or voxel will play on that key and every other key above it. And it will of course follow the pitch of the keys. You can in fact set up one sample per key if you wanted to do that. It's a really nice and powerful tool and I know that a lot of you are going to have a lot of fun with this. Now recording your own voxels is very very easy and all you have to do is activate the microphone icon and then press the record button. You simply just press and hold to record and then just let go of the recording button to stop the recording. When you're done recording it, you can go to the voxel page and it will pop up here and show you the spectrum of the recorded sample. Please don't go, just tell me what you want. I'll give you everything you need if you just tell me what you want. Just tell me, babe. Now, there's plenty more to say about iVoxel, but as I said, I don't want to make the video too long, so we're going to move on to the next one, which is Voice Synth by Cuneo. Hello, you, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host, and you're watching Hack Attack. Let me begin by saying that Voice Synth by Cuneo is probably the most complex vocoder on this list. It's not something I would recommend for beginners, but if you are into EDM music production, which is a short for electronic dance music, for those of you who don't know what that term is, well, then you would be missing out if you didn't take a look at Voice Synth here. The thing is, there's so many parts to it, so many pages, that you could make an entire one-hour video alone just about this vocoder. 
But we're not going to do that. We're going to look at some very specific things. And just like we did with iVoxel, we're going to look at the synth part where we actually get to shape our own waveform. And then I'm going to highlight something that this one does that none of the other vocoders do. All right, so to find the place where we need to be when we want to shape our own synth waves, well, we have to choose the correct mode. You see, inside Voice Synth, you have four different modes that you can set the vocoder to, and they all sound incredibly different from one another. So you've got Natural, Robot, Breath, and Designer. And Designer is the one we want to get to. So as soon as we select that one, this thing pops down from the top and here we can sculpt our own waveform. Now, this thing will allow you to produce almost any type of timbre that you want, any type of waveform, because you can mix three waveforms together, but they're really not just three waveforms. We'll have a look at what that means in a bit. Testing voice in. Testing voice in. Testing voice in, 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 testing voice in. So what we have here is a sine wave, a triangular waveform, and a square waveform. And you're able to monitor the waveform that you're producing or that you're sculpting in the middle here inside the oscilloscope. And right now we can't see anything and that's simply because I've turned down all of the waves. So these three knobs are basically level meters. Okay, so I'm gonna turn up the triangular waveform. And as you can see, a triangular waveform appears. But let's say we wanted a saw waveform. As you can see, we don't have that here, right? Sine wave, triangular wave, square. Well, all we have to do is to skew the triangular waveform counterclockwise, and we have a saw waveform. Now we can change this into a ramp up saw waveform by tweaking it clockwise, and there we go. Okay, so let's say we wanted to add a little bit of a square waveform, and there you go. And I'm gonna smooth out the square waveform, and suddenly we're getting this shape. Lastly, I'm gonna add a sine wave, and I'm gonna add some harmonics to that. Well, look at that. Isn't that interesting? Please don't go. Just tell me what you want. I'll give you everything you need. If you just tell me what you want, just tell me, babe. I'm telling you, the synthesis is strong with this one. And if you are into synths and vocoders, there is no reason for you not to check out voice synth. The format filter gives you the ability to make your sound sound more masculine or more feminine. Okay, so I know I'm gonna be skipping so much in this vocoder, but there is this one thing we really need to check out. You see, down here you have a selector for monophonic mode, polyphonic mode, and then arpeggiator mode. Yeah, it has that. And it's actually quite brilliant when you're doing vocoder stuff. So it works like any type of arpeggiator does if you ever use one. So you have a speed selector up here, which gives you values in both Hertz and also in BPM. And this thing will actually sync to a DAW tempo if you've got it loaded that way. Now you can find the direction patterns here, up, down, up, down, down, up. And then you have the octave selection here and you have a gate setting. And so it's very straightforward. And just listen to this. Space Odyssey, anyone? Anyone? To round this up, I would like to say that even though I do love this vocoder a lot, 
You see, Voicing has a way of producing some pretty harsh transients and S sounds. And when I use this thing, I usually do run my microphone through a de -esser. And even though I've done that, I will most of the time play around with the equalizer. And I'll do that a lot in the higher frequency area, just trying to remove those really sharp S's. that wraps it up. Let's get to the next vocoder, which will be VoiceBot. Hello you and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack. Now, VoiceBot or VBot has that typical Eric Seeked design. The flat, non-skeuomorphic design with weird and interesting logos, icons and glyphs instead of text. The graphical user interface isn't for everyone. And me personally, I usually go for apps that have a skeuomorphic design. But even though I do prefer skeuomorphic designs, I've always liked what Eric does with his graphical user interfaces because it makes me feel like I want to explore the app and all also, like I want to explore sound. Well, either way, we're going to look at two things again, and we're going to look at the carrier side of this vocoder and what can be done with the uh, synthesis part. And we're also going to look at something that makes um, this vocoder stand out. In the past, whenever I wronged someone, it was never my fault. No matter what I said, what I've done That moment, when you decide to let go It's getting harder to find To leave it all behind now, when it comes to the carrier side of things, synthesis side of things, you stick to this box here. And in here we have three oscillators or waveform generators, and you can switch between them on these dots. So this is number one, number two, number three. You can switch out the waveforms in all of these, and you have three different waveforms to choose from. So you have saw waveform, and if you tap again in this circle, you get a square, tap again and you get a noise. Tap again and you get back to the triangular one. Now you can run them at different octaves. So zero is the base octave, and then you can pitch them one octave up or one octave down. And you can do this individually for all three oscillators. You also have a fine tuning function and it's right beneath here. And what I usually do is I'll run all three oscillators and then I'll fine tune or detune two of them, one of them a bit up and one of them a bit down. And what you get is this chorus like sound. It does not matter what you write about when you're using a vocoder Cause everything just sounds so amazing It does not matter what you write about when you're using a vocoder Cause everything just sounds so amazing It does not matter what you write about when you're using a vocoder Cause everything just sounds so amazing It does not matter what you write about now there's not really that much more you can do with this, but you do have control of the waveform weight and the waveform duty cycle. And you access those modes by tapping and holding on the circle and then pulling up and down for the weight. And if you pull it all the way down until you can't see any red line, well, you've effectively turned that oscillator off. To access the duty cycle, you tap and hold and drag sideways. Like I said, it is a bit limited in what you can do with the synth and VoiceBot has this very specific unique sound where it really does sound like a singing vocoder. I mean, listen closely to the sound of this thing. Listen how clearly you can hear the words in here. Please don't go, just tell me what you want. I'll give you everything you need if you're just Tell me what you want, just tell me babe you see, with other vocoders, it sounds as if you've got a synth and you're putting vocals into it. But with this one, it almost sounds as if you've got a voice and you're putting a synth into it instead, the other way around. 
Now, the way that VoiceBot is able to do this is because of the two huge filter bags. Remember, this thing uses 128 bands. Remember when you're playing around with VoiceBot to actually fiddle around with the uh, amounts of bands that you're using, because this is a huge overall sound control that you have. <laughs> Okay, so apart from the adjustable bandpass filter amount, well, there is one more thing in here that is special and something that really makes VBOT stand out. And that is, this thing was clearly designed for players, people who play keyboards or pianos or something like that, because there's a lot of expression you can do inside this app. And uh, expression, what do I mean? Well, you can modulate a lot of the features in here through the keyboard. Now you can get to the modulation page where you set this stuff up if you press the VBOT icon in the upper left corner, right here. And here you can see icons and these icons correspond to icons found on the main page. So if you wanted to modulate, for instance, the delay, and the delay, by the way, is right here, this circle thing. Well, you just go in here, you activate this, and then you set an amount for it. It starts getting really weird when you use the modulation. I don't even know what this is. This makes VBOT very special. And if you are a keyboard player, then VoiceBot is definitely something you should check out. Yeah, I think that's what I want to say about VBOT. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is Dear Boko by Beep Street. Hello you and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko the Hack. I'm your host and you're watching Hack Attack. So just as we've done with all the previous vocoders, we're gonna start by looking at the carrier side of things or the synthesis part of the vocoder. But before we do that, I wanna highlight something here because Dear Voco actually has a way of changing the amount of bands being used in the vocoder. You can switch between 11 bands and 15 bands and you do that through the classic switch. So when you have it in the classic mode, you're using 11 bands and in the non-classic mode, you have 15 bands. But if you want to keep it to the old school type of sound, you know, like vocoders sounded like back in the day, well, you're going to keep it in the classic mode. Just tell me, babe. Please don't go. Just tell me what you want. I'll give you everything you need. If you just tell me what you want. Just tell me, babe. Okay, so if we look at the carrier side of things, then what can we do for synthesis? Well, so you have a level control for a saw waveform, you have another level control for a pulse waveform, and this one gives you pulse with modulation too. Next, you have a level control for the sub oscillator, and this one sounds like a rounded off square waveform. And lastly, you have a noise control. Now these can all be increased or decreased individually, so you can really create some unique timbres this way, simply by mixing the different types of waveforms. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack. Okay, so there's this one thing that makes this one really stand out, and that is the cue control right here. 
this one gives you direct access to the slope of the filters, of the bandpass filters, which gives you a huge amount of control over the overall sound. Check this out. So I take a step. So I take a step Going forward And I keep Okay, so if I keep following the same recipe as I've done so far with all the other vocoders I've already talked about, then I would be done with Dear Voco now. I've already talked about the synthesis part and I've already talked about something that makes this thing stand out. But uh, there is actually a third thing. And that third thing is something that only Dear Voco can do and also the last vocoder on this list. So what is it? Well, if you look here, you can see that under the carrier section, it says internal and input. You see, when you have it in internal mode, it works just like all of the other vocoders on this list. So it's basically using its own wave generators, its own oscillators, this synthesizer we've just went through. Now look what happens when we switch it over from internal mode to input mode. You see, the uh, internal synth engine kind of disappears and it's being replaced by this wiring diagram. So in this mode, we can now run our microphone on the right channel as a modulator. And for the carrier input, which is now the left channel, well, we can pretty much put anything we want in there. It does not have to be a synthesizer. It can be a guitar, it can be a drum, it can even be another vocoder output. Once I routed a black hole into there and it led me back into my own brain where I could see my own house that I didn't yet own. So I went in there and then I met up with a little girl named Christian and she was selling me. This makes Dear Voco very special. And it's not alone in doing this because the last vocoder on our list also has this function and it is Matrix Vocoder. And that's the one we're gonna look at next. Hello you and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Yoko the Hack. I'm your host and you're watching Hack Attack. Ah yes, Matrix Vocoder. Now this one is really good at producing sounds with clear and crisp consonants, F sounds, S sounds. Just listen to it. Please don't go. Just tell me what you want. I'll give you everything you need If you just tell me what you want Just tell me, babe out of all these vocoders, I find Matrix vocoder to be the most interesting because it's the weirdest one to me. It doesn't work like the other ones in a conventional way because there's something being added here and it's in the name, Matrix. We're gonna have a look at that. But first, we're gonna talk about the carrier side of things, synthesis, and how you can't do that in Matrix vocoder. In the past, Whenever I wronged someone, it was never my fault. No matter what I said, what I've done, that moment when you decide to let go, it's getting harder to find, to leave it all behind. Okay, Jacob, what do you mean by you cannot do any synthesis in Matrix Vocoder? Well, look at this interface. You don't see any waveform selectors or oscillators or anything like that. You're pretty much stuck with whatever waveform that Viersin already put in here. They had a clear vision of what they wanted this thing to sound like, and it's gonna stay that way. The format filter gives you the ability to make your sound sound more Okay, so Matrix Vocoder might seem a little bit limited in the way that you cannot really do much with the synth waveform, with the carrier waveform. 
but there is something extra in here. I did mention the matrix. It's in the name. And so what is it? Well, it's on the first page. It's right here. And this really is a routing matrix. So what are you routing? Well, you're routing the inputs and outputs between the 32 bands in here. The 32 bands analyzing your voice and then using that data to modulate the carrier wave signal. And I can tell you straight away that if you just start drawing in shapes in here, well, you're going to end up with a very awful sounding vocoder sound. But if you just start by moving a few dots around, you're going to get some very interesting timbres. And so I do urge you to experiment with that. And that's what I like about this one. I no longer wake up. Finding myself in hopelessness. Don't fight over everything. And I get to keep it all. That place. Deep within myself. The place. Where I was lost. Now, now, if you're looking for that regular equalizer view that you have in all the other vocoders, then you can find it on the level page. Here you have 32 bands and you can filter it any way you want. But there is one more page I want to show you actually, and that is the panning page, because not only can you control the filtering, you can also control the panning of the bands. All in all, this is a great vocoder with a very unique sound. And uh, yeah, I think that's what I want to say about it. So there was one more thing I wanted to go through, and it is why I prefer using vocoders through the InterApp audio protocol instead of using them as audio units. And if you are a Cubasis user, you should listen up because this affects you. Okay, so here's a problem related to DearVoco and the fact that it is an audio unit extension plugin. Because when you are loading something like that into a FX slot on an audio track, well, you cannot send MIDI from a MIDI channel inside Cubasis to that plugin. Not even when you've got the DearVoco MIDI FX version plugin of that vocoder loaded. So there's no way for you to send your pre-recorded MIDI sequences to DearVoco. So now you have to look for a solution. And the solution is routing the MIDI and the audio out from Cubasis into AUM, for instance. And now you can send MIDI to it. Now you can send the audio to it. You can record your audio inside AUM. And when you're done, you can take that audio and send it back into Cubasis. Yeah, that's, that's great. But you also have to remember that if you have other instruments inside Cubasis at that same time, well, Cubasis doesn't have a way of routing multiple outputs from itself to AUM. So every other instrument, including the vocoder, will be running on the main channel. So you have to remember to mute all other instruments before you start recording stuff in AUM. So yeah, you can see how it gets contrived and bothersome very quickly. I can tell you right here, right now, sometimes I just prefer the older Indrap audio protocol because it just simplifies stuff sometimes. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I've spent, well, a little bit over a year on it, not on production, but research, using vocoders, doing stuff like that. It might be more, but I've actually spent over a month working on it. So that's, it feels good that you're watching it. Now, if you did like this video and if you did learn something from it, then why not press that thumbs up? Because that really helps this channel out and it helps in supporting the work I do here. If you want to support me in any other way, then you can always share my videos and you can drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think uh, about the video or tell all of us reading the comment section down there which one of these vocoders you like or not like. Maybe you don't like vocoders at all. You can tell us about that.
Now, if you want to support me in a financial way, then I do have a PayPal account. I also have a Patreon and um, that's pretty much it. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. It does not matter what you write about when you're using a vocoder Cause everything just sounds so amazing It does not matter what you write about when you're using a vocoder Cause everything